Uh, well, first off, thank you for, to uh, Mayor Bowman for the opportunity to uh, have been uh, appointed part of the uh, panel uh, that uh, brings that allows us to bring forward this uh, recommendation to Council today. And uh, I want to make a few comments on transparency and accountability. Um, I believe this Council has made uh, great strides. Uh, we've brought in uh, many, uh, many new uh, initiatives to better accountability and transparency in City Hall. Some of those initiatives include the uh, implementation of the 52 recommendations from the three real estate audits, proactive disclosure of Freedom of Information and Protection Privacy Act requests, which uh, came, came out of the Mayor's office, uh, an online portal giving live updates on capital projects. Uh, I was pleased to propose uh, first uh, annual evaluations of our CAO, then annual evaluations of our four statutory officers. And thank you very much to this council for endorsing a report that came out of that. We have live streaming of committee meetings. We have a new expenditure. Uh, we have a new expenditure policy out of the mayor's office, among many other initiatives. And. Um, I keep thinking, uh, what, uh, what might City Hall have been had we had an integrity commissioner uh, in the last council? And I think um, the, expression that comes to, the expression that comes to mind is, sunshine is the best disinfectant. Um, had we had an, accountability com uh, an integrity commissioner, any member of the public could have put in a request to investigate any number of questionable things that happened uh, in, in the last council. Um, yes, uh, just like to, I'd like to acknowledge uh, what Councillor Gervasi said in terms of um, legislative powers that we don't have. In practice, if anyone currently has an issue and suspects confl conflict of interest uh, of anyone on Council, what they need to do is they need to register a complaint with the Court of Queen's Bench, they need to pay $300, and then a judge needs to determine whether or not that particular Councillor is uh, guilty of conflict of interest. And the only penalty now is for the seat to be vacated. Uh, that's understood to be um, um, not uh, uh, in, need, in need of update. Uh, currently, judges are reticent to vacate that seat because we do have a democratic process and uh, the, um, the uh, learnings across the country now where conflict of interest is, is an issue municipalities across Canada, not just Winnipeg, uh, judges often choose to not use that sanction when that's the only sanction that's available. But I do want to say this uh, conflict of interest uh, uh, integrity commissioner is just such a huge step in the right direction because it's going to just um, give the public and anyone who is interested that assurance that if they do have, um, if they do have uh, an inkling that something's going wrong, they can put in a request, and if, if that request is deemed to be uh, something that should be investigated, we now have a professional, a lawyer, somebody who is trained at doing these sorts of things, and that person will be able to investigate those complaints. So just a huge step uh, in the right direction. And um, I, yeah, just going back to just my, my, my thought of, had these things been in place, I, I believe many of the issues that we've seen uh, that came out of the last council could have been, uh, well, perhaps even prevented, uh, but maybe we would have found out much, much sooner. Uh, and, uh, and thank you once again, uh, Mayor Bowman, for your leadership on this. I, you know, I, know, I know the last council considered it and decided not to go in this direction because, <coughs> because the conflict of interest uh, or the integrity commissioner would, would be lacking certain powers, but I think even without those powers, the fact that anybody can now ask these questions and that uh, legitimate concerns will be investigated is just such a huge step in the right direction. So uh, thank you to my colleagues for, uh, for your attention. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence.